Hey guys, welcome back to Portal of Wisdom. I am back today with another story for you. If you are new to the channel, like and subscribe and click that little post notification bell so you get alerted when I post new videos. And now on to today's topic. I love doing the lost treasure and lost gold mine stories. Some of these are, are really fun and interesting. And this is another one along those lines. This is the lost sublet gold mine on the border of West Texas and New Mexico. So there's a gentleman, his name was William Caldwell Sublet, and he went by the name of Ben. He was born in the 1830s. I found conflicting information here, 1834, 1838, something like that in Tennessee. And he was in Texas around the time of 1860. It's said that he was a Texas Ranger for most of the year of 1860. And then the Civil War broke out and around early 1861, he went back to the Arkansas, Tennessee area and he joined the Confederates in the Civil War effort. And he was there for a while, and uh, he eventually met a woman, and I believe he married her in 1869. Her name was Laura Louisa Denny, and she was a bit younger than him. I believe she was born in 1847, so she was probably somewhere around 20 years old when he met her, and, and a couple years later they got married. So in... In the early 1870s, they had moved, I think they had moved to Colorado first, and he prospected there and stuff, and then they ended up back in Texas because that didn't work out. And they were living in a small town in West Texas, and they had a couple of children, they had a couple of girls, Olive and Jenny in the early 1870s, and then Rolf was born, he went by the name of Ross, I believe his name was Rolf Ross Sublet. So his son was born in early 1873, and then Ben's wife, Laura, she ended up dying of tuberculosis in late 1873, and left Ben with the uh, with the three children. So at this time, Ben was working. He was working a bit for the Texas and Pacific Railroad, and he did some odd jobs, and he prospected a bit, and he did some well witching for water wells. And so he did a lot of different things um, in the in the area that, that he was at. And after his... After his wife died, he lost some of his income because his wife was doing some washing and helping out with with some of the, the money. And they lived out of a tent next to the railroad yard, I believe. So Ben worked in the railroad yard some. And, and uh, anyhow, so when the oldest daughter got a little bit older she took on some wash work to you know washing clothes and stuff to help out the family with some of the financials and and stuff like that and ben would take some time and he would go between his odd jobs and he would go prospect in the mountains west um, toward the guadalupe mountains and he had been warned many times that he shouldn't be going into the Guadalupe Mountains because the Apache Indians, that was kind of a stronghold and a dangerous place for white men to go. And Ben also was seen in the bars probably more than people thought he should have been being a, a single dad. And, and uh, so he was in the bars drinking a little too much, would disappear prospecting for a while, and, and the oldest daughter was taking care of the of the younger two and taking on some wash work and and things like that so that was kind of his his life for a while and i believe the town they were living in in texas then was monahan's texas but eventually he moved the family to the east to odessa Te texas and i believe that was a little bit bigger town so 
I think he thought there'd be some more job prospects there, and uh, and he got a little bit more work there, and I believe the daughter got some more washing clothes duties and work and stuff like that that you know they were able to earn some more money then but on it was said on one odd job he worked with an old mescalero apache man and ben was told where there was a lot of gold in the guadalupe mountains and this apache man had been banished from the tribe and he no longer felt the need to keep the tribal secrets of this gold mine that they knew about and this this part right here i've seen conflicting stories either ben met this man on an odd job and kind of befriended him or ben had met this man prior to living in uh, in Texas when he had been in the White Mountains of Arizona. I don't know for sure which one it is, but apparently he befriended an Apache man and, and, and found out some details about this, about this mine. It makes a little bit more sense that he probably met the man around Odessa, Texas, because that's pretty close to the Mescalero Apache area. So... Anyhow, whatever whatever it was, um, this man told Ben the location of a really rich gold mine because he felt no longer the need to keep some of the Apache secrets since he had been banished. And he told Ben the location the best that he could remember. And Ben had looked many times for this mine between jobs and he didn't have any luck. And then finally his luck changed and he did find it. And he went back to Odessa and he hit the saloon that was owned by Molly Williams and and he came in there and said he was going to buy everyone a few rounds of, of drinks. And I think people didn't take him seriously at first. Um, they thought he was a crazy man because he was out prospecting in the dangerous areas and, and various things that have been going on in, in his life. People just didn't take him seriously. But then he whipped out a sack of gold nuggets and he claimed he found a rich mine and then everybody in the saloon at that point was extremely happy and ecstatic and he bought uh, quite a few rounds uh, of drinks for people in the saloon. And it was said at this time, now that he finally had some gold and he had some money, he bought his children their first new clothes they had ever had, and he enrolled them in school, and and he bought two new mules and a wagon, and every three weeks or so, he would go off towards the Guadalupe Mountains, and he would come back with gold. And... Ben refused offers to be partners with some of the other Odessa town folk that had, you know, recently called him crazy and now wanted to be his partners. So he basically declined them and just kind of kept to himself. But if he popped into the saloon, he may buy some rounds of drinks and, and uh, anyhow, and then continue on his uh, exploits. So the townsfolk at this point, realize that he's not going to go into business or tell anyone anything so if he's not going to take a partner or any of this then they wanted to try to follow him and figure out where he was going and see if they could figure out where the mine was but Ben was really good at playing these games with them sometimes he would head off towards the Pecos River and he would just camp there a bit and then come back sometimes he would head off and he would elude people and then come back with some gold, but the, he was really unpredictable in this area. Every time he took off and headed out of town, he might just be playing a trick or he may be going to his gold mine, but he might not be. He might be leading people on a wild goose chase. So it was difficult for the people to try to follow him. And... It was said when he came back, he would convert his gold into cash in Odessa or around Odessa, and then he would put the cash in a bank in Midland, Texas, just east of Odessa, and this bank was owned by W.E. Connell. So 
Connell started watching Ben's accounts, and he noticed when Ben's accounts would would get low and he wouldn't have so much money in there, he would disappear into the mountains, and then he would come back with a large deposit. So Connell and his partner hired a tracker named Jim Flanagan to watch for Ben's next trip once they noticed his bank account getting a bit low on funds. And Flanagan, he liked this. He got to hang out in the bars and watch for Ben and and uh, watch him come in for his usual drinks and try to listen and see if he could overhear anything. And, and Flanagan was getting paid to be out drinking himself. And Connell would let Flanagan know when... The funds were getting low, and he would just keep his eye on on Ben and and watch for him to leave any day to go get more funds out of the mountains. So Flanagan then did notice Ben leave town, and he gave him a head start of about two hours to not attract any suspicion because he knew Ben was good at ditching people. And so Flanagan followed the wagon tracks for three days with no issue at all. And on day four, he lost the tracks by the Pecos River. And when he returned to town, he found out that Ben had already returned to town with money to put in his bank account. So then at this point, people thought Ben maybe had some stashes of gold between Odessa and the Guadalupe Mountains, maybe somewhere along the Pecos River also. No one really knew for sure. And about uh, about two years later, Ben met an old prospector named Grizzly Bill. So Grizzly Bill's life of odd jobs and a bit of desperation reminded Ben a bit of himself, and he took pity on him. So Ben gave him directions to the mine, and Grizzly Bill came back with a flour sack full of gold. And Ben was willing to share, as he said, that there was more gold than he could ever spend at his mine. So Grizzly Bill, he drank and partied for two days straight. And in his drunken stupor, someone dared Grizzly Bill to get on a wild horse to try to break it. And he took the dare, and he was bucked off the horse. And when he hit the ground, he broke his neck, and he died. So... Now the one person besides Ben that knew where the mine was, was no longer alive. So a while later, it doesn't say exactly how much later, but a little later on, Ben meets another guy named Mike Wilson. And he initially took well to the directions that Ben gave him. He told him how to find the mine, and, and, and Mike came back with some sacks of gold. So Ben had shared the secret to one more person. And and this Mike Wilson, he he went on a three-day drinking binge when he got back. And I think he bought all kinds of rounds for people in the bar. And he managed to blow all of the gold he brought back. And it sounds like he brought back quite a bit. He managed to blow it all in those three days. So Ben was not pleased with this. And when when this gentleman, Mike, couldn't find the mine again, Ben was okay with this. And Ben didn't provide him with any more details about the mine, and Ben couldn't remember how he got there. And, and, and I guess Mike had looked for this mine for the rest of his life, but he never found it. So he forgot all the important pertinent details, and... and uh, So this was one more person that knew about the mine's location that had come back with gold and then uh, couldn't retrace his steps. He couldn't remember exactly how he got there. So Ben may have also told one more person the location of the mine, and this man's name was, was Rufus Stewart. And he was a stagecoach driver, he was a house painter, and he was a hunting guide. And Ben encountered him on a hunting guide trip. They were camped out at the Pecos River with the hunters that he was guiding. And 
They were camped near the town of Mentone, Texas. So they were going out in the morning for deer and antelope, and the men had worked for or did work for the railroad that came through the area. And Ben pulled up with his wagon, uh, with his wagon one evening, and the the hunters they were going to sleep and. And Rufus Stewart, he was cleaning the dishes from the evening meal and kind of cleaning up. And Stewart knew Ben from Odessa, but he knew him as a crazy nut from Odessa. But he had also heard the wild tell that, that Ben had also found gold or had a gold mine. And Ben invited Stewart to go with him to get more gold, but... Stuart couldn't, as he said, he had these men he had to guide on a hunt in the next morning, and apparently they were going to be there for a few days, and, and he needed to be there for these men. So Stuart couldn't go, and he also told Ben that uh, it's too risky in those mountains due to renegade Apaches. And Ben and Stuart, they talked into the night, and in the morning they had coffee, and Ben agreed to show Stuart something a couple of miles out of camp. So they rode horses to a high spot, I believe west of there, and Ben pointed at a blue mound, and he gave directions while he handed the telescope to Stuart. And he showed him through the telescope the mine directions, which may have been difficult to determine through the telescope. But anyhow, he pointed out things to Stuart as he was looking through the telescope and he was looking at the blue mound. And, uh, and then they returned to camp. And Ben went his way towards the mountains and, and Stuart probably got his men up and got them ready for their hunt and, and everything. And, and Ben had said that he would be back in three days. And on the evening of the third night, or third day, Ben pulled back into camp. And Ben joined them for dinner, and while cleaning up, Ben told Stuart he had something to show him. And Ben... Ben laid a bunch of gold nuggets out on a little blanket. Now Stuart could no longer doubt Ben as seeing is believing, and he was now seeing all these gold nuggets, and he couldn't believe the size of some of the nuggets. And he had even asked Ben about why he didn't have any, you know, little nuggets. They were all big nuggets, and Ben had told him something along the lines of, what's the point of picking up the little nuggets when I can just rake up the sand some more and I can find big nuggets? The big nuggets are easier to pick up. And Ben said there was a thousand more or more than that even lying in the dry creek bed. And he said this was probably his last trip there. He said he was getting old and and he said the climbing and hiking to the mine was, was just getting too hard. And he had enough gold to last the rest of his lifetime now. So Ben gave Stuart one of the large nuggets. And he stayed overnight in the camp. And then he left in the morning. And Stuart said he never saw Ben again. But he did go to the blue mound that Ben had shown him through the telescope, and he tried to use Ben's directions, you know, from there many times, but he never had any luck. So Ben had also taken his son Rolf or Ross to the mine at least once, and I believe it was said that it was around the time that Ross was about nine or ten years old. So Ross recalled being lowered down to the bottom of the canyon by rope. And he was a kid at the time, and so he paid no attention to the surroundings. But as an adult, he searched many times for many years with no luck. And in 1892, Ben had passed away in Odessa, Texas, and and it was said in one of Ross's recollections about the time him and his dad had at the mine, he said this, 
in the southern end of the Guadalupes, on the east side, is a canyon like a chasm, sheer on both sides, accessible by only a rope. It varies in width from 50 to 100 feet and is perhaps 75 feet deep. In the wall near the floor of the canyon is a shaft like a cave. In the cave is a deposit of gold. So that is what Ross said at some point uh, a little bit later in, in life just from his recollection of the time him and his dad went to the, the canyon with the gold. And many people say that the Guadalupe Mountains are not conducive to gold as they say they are purely sedimentary and not igneous or volcanic, um, which would be expected for gold-laden mountains to be. Others say in every direction of the Guadalupe Mountains, there are mountains that are volcanic in nature. And some think it is foolish to think that that the volcanic origin mountains on every side of the Guadalupe Mountains would be the only igneous or volcanic mountains around there. A lot of people believe that in between all the mountains scattered in the, the Guadalupes, there's also some volcanic mountains, possibly some volcanic vents where gold can be found. Even well-known treasure hunter W.C. Jameson, he was in the area in 1987, and he believes that the mine is close, and he took rock samples from the areas he was at in the Guadalupe Mountains, and he took them back for testing, and he found uh, quite a few of his samples to be igneous or volcanic in origin, and he believes there's enough evidence to show that the mine is, in fact, out there. So this is the story of Ben Sublet's lost gold mine. So there's a lot of people that have done research about this, and... I think I'm going to do another video about a lot of the different researchers and some of the f facts and things that they say and where they're looking and just go over a, quite a few more details. But I don't want this video to get so super long that it gets bogged down. I want to first tell the story and then we'll get into more of the details of where people are looking and what they, were, what they are doing in uh, recent years. So we'll do that one as a part two. Thanks for listening to this one and like and subscribe if you like these kind of stories.